Welcome to the Bayou Country Music Association show, brought to you in part by Southern Sound Outfitters. And today's guest, I'm bo- I'm joined by none other than Mr. Mark Leach. You might know him from songs such as "She Don't Go to Church" that has been on our uh, our Spotify playlists and our charts. How's it going today, Mark? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Awesome, man. And for the folks out there, you have the sound of a of a of a southerner, I, I would say. But you're from the big state of Ohio, right? Yeah, I'm from Ohio, and uh, living in Nashville for about three years. And pretty soon, the y'all started slipping into my vocabulary, and it's kind of kind of starting to ease its way in there to the way I talk. Well, man, I, it, it's doing good because uh, you got a great voice, and uh, let's get back into the to the roots of it, man. Obviously, you uh, you were from a, a small town outside of Akron. I, I'm guessing from my research, how did you go from there to musically, you know, getting down to Nashville? Uh, yeah, so I grew up in a town called uh, Barberton, and uh, ever since I was little, I was listening to. Alan Jackson and Travis Tritt and all those guys and I worked at uh, my family has a shop in Barberton and it's a butcher and a bakery shop and I grew up working there ever since I could walk and my job is to make the barbecue sauce so when I was making barbecue sauce I wrote my first three albums making barbecue sauce and and, uh, just singing along to country radio and so I just decided finally that after I had enough songs and enough networking down in uh, Music City decided to finally make a move and you moved to Nashville in 2015? 2015, yeah. And in 2015, I mean, by the time you got there, you, you had a, a good following and a good, uh, you know, a, a good, what, you had one, two EPs under your belt already? I had or, uh, three. three. I had three, yeah. Three, okay. Yeah, and then uh, Homemade was what uh, the EP I recorded after I moved down there. Awesome. And you know, obviously, the uh, the last single that you had uh, had out before this one that dropped yesterday, uh, uh, we had it, and you know, come across it. And I'm a big Eric Church fan, and, and I thought it was so clever. You know, the, it's called uh, "She Don't Go to Church," and kind of you, you incorporate almost every line of every Eric Church song, and and. Is that something that you wrote, or is it something that had you had a hand in co-writing? Yeah, so it's actually a, a true story. So um, I had a write that day with a, a guy named Bradley Banning, and he was flying in from Texas to Nashville. And he came straight to uh, my apartment, and he was telling me that uh, he met this girl at the airport. And he was like, man, I, I thought she was the one. And I was like, well, what happened? <laughs> he said, uh, she, she said she loved country music, but she hated Eric Church. And I was like, well, we're writing that song, because that's an oxymoron, so... Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we wrote. Uh, she don't go to church. So, uh, that's yeah. awesome, bro. That's a true story too. I mean, if you don't like Eric Church, uh, not only can you not you not be on the show, but yeah, you know, you're no fan of country music. Yeah, if you don't know guys like me, you can't date a girl like her. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so that yeah, that song did, has that song given you a lot of uh, a lot of success over the past. Yeah, so it's actually got me noticed by uh, I don't know if you know the country uh, kind of blog group apparel company whiskey riff yeah um, yeah yep they uh they picked it up and they, they, they're actually the reason the song blew up the way it did um so uh yeah it's gotten gotten a little bit of notoriety awesome man and we brought you here today which you have this new single that dropped and it's called back porch vacation uh i listened to it uh last night as soon as it came out and I love it. Instantly love it. Uh, go behind the uh, scenes of how that song came about, the writing, the process, and you know if that's the, is that something off of a future album or EP or just a single you guys wanted to drop for summertime. Yes, yeah, so I wrote it uh, with two guys, Davis Branch and Josh Withenshaw, and we had to write that day. And none of us really had a, a hook that was landing for anybody, so we just decided to write. I mean, honestly, we didn't expect the song to get released. Like, we, we were just trying to write the most ridiculous, funniest things we could think of. And, um, like, I've never sang a song where I dropped the word banana hammock before. So <laughs> we, uh, 
so we wrote this song and I played it out live and everybody you know show after show people would come up and they'd be like hey play that back porch song so it was like oh man this song actually might do well so put that just came out today um and uh yeah I'll have a, a new uh, full length album coming out here in uh end of September and that'll be on it awesome so this is something that you had played live shows yeah so we played it out played it out quite a bit and uh there's, it's like a big kind of fan sing along because we do the little Marco Polo um, call and response thing, so um, people really enjoy it. Awesome, man. Well, that, taking a uh, page out of the Luke Combs book, man, with his uh, new new deluxe album that he's put out, where I know he's been singing those songs on the uh, on the road for six to eight months, and finally getting it out there, but. That I guess he, as he said, is that would you consider the, like the best, uh, the best focus group as far as new music coming out? Oh yeah, I think it's the best way to do it because if you're playing it out live and you see that people are really digging it, or uh, you know, even if they're not, you can kind of pick it from there. Because I mean, there's plenty of songs going on in this album that I didn't really consider until I played them out live, and everybody loved them, so I was like, I should probably reconsider it. So. Um, yeah, knowing what your fans like, I think, is a huge part of what goes into making an album. Awesome. Well, man, we got this song uh, on, right here in the studio, uh, and I was going to get you, the honors, to introduce it and play it for the guy, everybody, the listeners. If they haven't got it yet, they'll be able to hear it here. Uh, so without further ado, I'll let you take it away, man. <laughs> All right, I'm Mark Lee, just my new single, Back Porch Vacation. Six hours till I turn my phone back on airplane mode. Got a kiddie pool filled with ice cubes, keep my feet cold and the beer cool. Might make a few trips to the liquor store, hang a do not disturb on my screen door and get drunk and sunburned. I got two weeks of summer. I'm gonna sit right here till my ass hurts I'm gonna sit cold beer till I'm plastered I got no obligations, no check-ins where I'm staying I don't need a reservation, I'm just a back porch vacation Back porch vacation Sit here all day Playing one man Drinking games Yelling Marco Marco Fill my cup Cause I'm red and I'm solo Drunk and sunburned I got two weeks of summer I'm gonna sit right here Till my ass hurts I'm gonna sip cold beer Till I'm plastered I got no obligations No check-ins Where I'm staying I don't need Reservation, just a back porch vacation. Come no wake of calls, no copper tone, just salt and lime and cold patron. It's drunk, drum burp. I'm drunk in summer. I got two weeks of summer. I'm gonna sit right here till my ass hurts. I'm gonna sip cold beer till I'm plastered. I got no obligations, no check ins where I'm staying. I don't need a reservation. I'm just a back porch vacation. Vacation. Howdy, home, Emmett. Yeah. Hope you like my banana hammock. All right. You gotta be looking at him in two weeks. Say what I said. Right. Thank <laughs> you. 
And there it is, folks, Back Porch Vacation by Mark Leach. It's released. It's available. iTunes, Spotify, the whole music, Outlook, data, everywhere. You know, the whole, uh, nowadays you stream everything on every platform. But it's out, folks. Hope you guys love it. I think it's a great, great song, great summer song, great song to relate to. So, uh, Mark you going on the road and promoting this for, for summertime? I mean, I know summertime's a big time for artists uh, such as yourself. They got CMA Fest coming up, and they got, you know, tours all around. Oh, yeah. So I'm actually, uh, I'm back in Ohio right now. I got a big uh, single release party tomorrow for Back Porch, and um, then I'll be back in Nashville on Sunday and playing CMA Fest on June 7th and June 9th. So it'll be... Uh, Busy week coming up. That's awesome, man. And is this uh, your first time playing CMA Fest? No, I played. Uh, I played a couple times. The uh, here been in Nashville down there on the Broadway, the Bridgestone Arena. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the I think the first time uh, I played it. So awesome. it's uh, it's a good time. It's a it's it gets pretty crazy. It's like a circus. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, you playing CMA Fest? Are you having any kind of going on tour with any? big names or you for, as far as the towards the summer or fall um not really uh not really going on tour with anybody right now i've mentioned before um we're getting ready to um drop a full-length album here in september so everything's kind of like be leading doing, up to that yeah doing a lot of recording and writing and finishing up on that right? yeah so we got almost everything recorded i just got to cut one more uh one more song here at the end of june and um after that it's, it's kind of on the engineer's hands so it's mixing and mastering and all that well that's awesome man i mean the only reason i asked is because i know I'm, you've opened up for i mean kip moore gary allen granger smith colt ford chris jansen john party to name a few and then of course eric church uh this it, w- what was that like to get a call from eric church and being like hey man you want to open up for me <laughs> well i wish it was from eric church it was actually um this big country festival. Um, the guys who run that called me and asked me if I'd be uh, interested in opening for them. And I mean, that was surreal. I remember I was sitting on the couch in my apartment. And I, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, man, this is. He was the one. I mean, who got me to want to do it? I remember flying to Greensboro, North Carolina, to watch him play in his hometown. Um, during a series like me, I remember like nudging my brother, pointing at him, being like, "That's that's what I want to do." And so uh, to see him play in his hometown and then get to open form and mine was pretty uh, pretty surreal did, uh, when you uh, when you open form did you get a chance to meet him and talk with him a little bit or unfortunately no he was uh, he flew in for the show about probably 30 minutes before he went on and then uh, as soon as he finished he got back on there his little whatever car took him to the airport and he flew out wow well I mean he's a busy man and I'll have to tell you, brother, every time I bring a singer-songwriter on the show and I ask him, uh, I normally ask, oh, what would be your dream collaboration? And then, you know, what would be the one that you would love to do a song with or a write with? And I might I might ask you that and see how you answer. Hmm. Um, man, that's a tough question. I mean, I would say your church, but... I'm not sure. I feel like I'd like to go outside the box and maybe pick someone from a different genre. Um, uh, I'm a fan all over the board, man. I, I kind of cross the spectrum on genres that I listen to. So, uh, well, I don't know. I'll make it easy. If it was one country star that you could write with or do, you know, some kind of collaboration with, who would it be? Mm, I'd probably say. Yeah, I'd probably say either Eric Church or Ashley McBride. That, that's some good choices. And I have to say, the only reason I, I set you up like that, man, is because everyone, almost 90% of the time, they say Eric Church. And I'm, I just, I'm, I, I'm like, yep. Because I personally <laughs> believe, man, Eric Church is a uh, one of the best writers, you know, in Nashville as far as, and they have a lot of them, but, you know, as far as music and writing and his, just his style, I love it. Um, but, Ashley McBride, another one that I love. I actually got to see her in concert a while back with Luke Combs, and and I've been a fan ever since, man. She's she's a real she's the real deal, man. And Eric Church actually 
brought her on to the to the Opry stage a few years back, and that was so cool, you know. But uh, yeah, you mentioned her you, album is incredible. Oh, extremely. And you mentioned that um, you listen to a lot of stuff, and I also like to ask, you know, on the personal side, and I ask people, what's the last three songs you listen to currently, as of right now? Just if you picked up your phone and listened, I mean, what would it be? Well, I just got out of the gym, so it's going to be a little weird. <laughs> hey, no, there's no weird answers here. I tell them this could be any genre, any a decade, whatever. Uh, let me see here. Let me think. It was uh, Limp Biscuit. <laughs> uh, what else was on there? Oh, Disturbed. Oh yeah, and, that's. Uh, an, I, I feel you, man. That's gym. You got to get <laughs> pumped, man. Yeah. Um, what was the third one? Limp Biscuit, Disturbed. Oh, and then um, there's a band called Flatfoot 56. They've got a really good rendition of Amazing Grace. So, yeah. That's the gym, the gym playlist, man, the gym. <laughs> That's the gym playlist, yeah. So uh, I'll go ahead and ask you. You mentioned that you like all genres. If you was to do a Crossroads, on, you know, CMT Crossroads, who would be the one that you'd love to do it with? Whew. Um, maybe... Uh, Yeah, that would be awesome. All three. All three together with you. That'd be cool as hell. Cool as hell, man. So, yeah, obviously you, you got a wide variety of music that you like to listen to, and I think that's a good thing, man. I mean, I think all music, it, it kind of influences it, it itself, and uh, you could take you, you take uh, influences from all genres, man. I mean, that, that, oh, yeah. that, that, that bogged down, I think, on country, then, you know, you keep writing the same stuff. I think you need to go outside of the box and uh, it kind of opens your mind up a little bit as far as melodies and, and all that stuff. Definitely, man. Definitely. It, it really does. So having that uh, that open mind, it, it ha definitely, I would say, has it grown you as an artist? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, Back Porch Vacation has a lot of, I mean, it's got country elements to it, but then there's also a little, uh, like, I just listen to Van Weezer. Um, there's little, little nodes of Weezer in that song, too. So it's just kind of being creative and, and trying to, like I said, not get bogged down into just just being country. Even if you even if you are a country artist, I think it, you need to kind of expand to make different sounds. Yep, definitely. So how would you say that you have grown from, you know, obviously you put out the EP... Uh, with love from Tennessee, I, I'm sorry, it, and then let's get lost. That was 2013 and 14, and then homemade in 16. Uh, from then to now, how, how have has your music and songwriting evolved? Um, well, actually, the it's not on there anymore. But I had the, the first one I ever put out was in 2011, um, and I think just you grow as a songwriter and you write with people that are you know better than you and I think you have to do that if you want to grow I remember growing up when I was little and wrestling and my brother would make me wrestle the biggest guy in the room because he was like you know if you're if you're staying where you're comfortable then you're never going to grow and so I think being around all these talented people in Nashville and learning from them um, I'm really excited for this new album because it's it's the best stuff I've I've put out so it's uh, a lot of it's just being patient and and uh, trying to learn so you can grow and I think that's what I've just been trying to do over the past since I put even since I put out uh, Homemade awesome and I know we talked about the uh, the story behind uh, she don't go to church uh, but we never even got into the back the back porch vacation who, who did you write that yourself or did you have a hand in co-writing that yeah so um, yeah when I wrote that with uh, Davis Branch and Josh Wood and Sean um, you know like I was saying we just kind of we sat down and none of us really had an idea that for that we were all excited about. So we just started just honestly throwing jokes out there and writing them down. And the song wrote itself in about two hours. And it was, didn't plan on releasing it, but it became like a fan favorite. So it was, it would have been stupid not to. Yeah. I, I myself, man, I say it all the time. I'm a lyric nerd, I guess you could say, but 
and songwriting nerd. I love to to hear this the the behind the scenes of the songwriters and how songs come about. And it seems like every every time a good song comes about, it always starts off maybe with a with, with a lyric or a hook or, or a verse, and then it just if it hits, it hits, and it just comes together within hour. Yeah, I mean, some songs, yeah, they'll, you'll write them, you'll write them in an hour, and some songs you'll, I mean, stress over for days. Um, but the songs that usually just come together, like the one song I put out my last EP, um, one, of my, my, one of my favorite songs I've ever written is um, If There's a Bar Up in Heaven. And um, Great song, great song. Um, yeah, and it just kind of wrote that in my apartment, and uh, um, yeah. And um, sorry, I just got distracted. But no, I wrote that in my apartment, and uh, I was sitting on—I didn't have any furniture, and I was sitting on like a deflated air mattress. And it was like my grandpa's anniversary of when he had passed away. My mom texted me, and she's like, "You know, it's your grandpa. It's like his anniversary." And she's like, "But if there's a bar up in heaven," I was like, "Well, that is a hell of a song title." So, yeah, um, wrote that with uh, Pat Bunch and uh, Doug Johnson, who actually wrote uh, Three Wooden Crosses. So it just kind of—it was a hell of a songwriting team <laughs> that's awesome man yeah that, I, I've uh, I've listened to your past stuff and that, that song yeah that's definitely one that you know come from the heart and it wasn't something that you just you know pinned together off of nothing you know you, you, you I could feel like that was something from that you live so uh-huh. uh, definitely a great song man and I, I look forward do you have a name to, to reveal to us for the upcoming uh, the upcoming album not, uh, I mean, I, I know what it is, but I'm, I'm kind of waiting to drop that. So, all right, uh, I just had to put you yeah. in the spot and see, man. I, I got to get the most out of the out of you can. But <laughs> yeah, man, back porch vacations, great song. I think it's gonna be a great summer hit. Like uh, as far as a single goes, and and you know, couldn't pick the better time to, to put something like that out because we all, you know, summertime we could all just use a, a a dang back porch vacation right now, you know. Yeah, I just need a good drink and something. Exactly, and, and I think it's going to do well, man. Uh, I, I, uh, I know you from Ohio, and you're you're probably suffering from last night's, uh, you know, game one, <laughs> game one loss. But it'll be okay, man. I, I got several. I got a buddy Casey Allen that you mentioned that you knew. Uh, you know, Casey's from. He's also been on our uh, charts with uh, his his new song. I want my number back, which I guess we can all relate to. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I, I mess with him too. So I got to mess with my Ohio uh, Ohio natives, and because I guess Louisiana doesn't have the Pelicans ain't in it, so I got to mess with somebody. <laughs> it's all good. But yeah, man. Well, I mean, we really, I really enjoyed you being on the show, brother, and talking with us. And uh, we're gonna p- promote as much as we can. And uh, I-, I wanted to let you know first, man. I mean, I had. You know uh, your song. Uh, she doesn't go to church on our top thirty, and uh, I think I think it might have a a, a a step down for this new single, man. I really do because it's it's going to do good things, man. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, man. I got to ask you though, what's your uh, what's your beer of choice? Cold. Cold. Oh, good answer. All right. No, man. I, I like I like Michelob. I like Bud Light. I like cold. Really, just cold. Cold. All right. We'll uh, go crack one open and go listen to the song. Oh, I, I, I have a back porch waiting, brother. I do. <laughs> but, man, we thank you. And uh, I, li- I like to take time to thank our sponsors and our partners, man. Uh, we uh, w- we couldn't do this without their backing and, and promoting their their brands and their things. Uh big one is Southern Sound Outfitters. Uh, Southern Sound Outfitters, man, they, they're a great organization. They, of course, they have apparel that is based around music and but they also support a lot of up-and-coming artists, and uh, I mentioned Casey earlier. They, they're a big promoter, Casey, and a lot of, a lot of up-and-comers. Uh, so give them guys a check out on their website at www.southernsoundoutfitters.com. Uh, also, go give a check out to southernsmusicscene.com. They they have a great uh, website that they feature a lot of, you know, up-and-coming artists in the texas music scene as far as uh that and also for texas music pickers who uh do, do do great things down there 
Uh, also, another apparel brand uh, down here in Louisiana, Swamp Assassin. I'm sure everybody's heard of them. Great guy, Corey Adams, local guy, Baton Rouge area. Uh, they support us. We rock them. Uh, also, Swamp Gear, Roto Molded Ice Chest. It's getting hot. If you want to go have a, a, a you know, a back porch vacation, you need a good ice chest and whole ice for a while. Go, go, go check these guys out at swampshop.com. Uh, Roto Molded Ice Chest made here locally in Ornoville, Louisiana. They have some great products fully stocked on their website. Check those guys out. Uh, and also, last but not least, to uh, to our venue, Cowboys in Scott. They have a Western Arena, a nightclub, and also a Western store. They that triple threat, man. And uh, the nightclub offers a lot of live music and a lot of great great artists come in and out of there locally and also from all over. Uh, so check those guys out for their schedule. Uh, and that's all I got as far as this in, man. But Mark. I enjoyed uh, enjoyed you on the show, man. And if there's any last shout outs you'd like to make to anybody, no, man. I just appreciate you having me. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you joining us, man. And y'all be sure to go and uh, and check out uh, Mark Mark's new song, Backport Vacation. Uh, also, check out his other single that's that's been on our top charts with uh, She Don't Go to Church. Great song if you're you know just a Eric Church fan. I mean, if you're not, I don't know why you're listening. But uh, go check both of those out, and uh, I didn't. I failed to mention, man. Uh, you have a website, social media. How do people keep up with your news and your shows and stuff? Yes, sir, you just go to markleachmusic.com. Leach is L E A C H, and then um, all my social media is just at Mark Leach Music. Awesome, man. I'll be sure and tag all those in the uh, in the broadcast that I when I publish it to our site. That way, everybody can go and give him a. You know, check out his website, give him a follow on Instagram, and check out his Facebook, and you know, all that. So, uh, keep up with his stuff, man. And until next time, guys, you guys have a blessed day. Go have a back porch vacation. <laughs>